like, so that was the new Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And as one of the biggest Harry Potter fans in the world, you guys know that I am so pumped about that book. Um, so I'm looking at it, and I'm one of those readers that goes to the very last page first. And I see on the last page that there are 308 pages. Because, let's be real, before you start a book, you have to know how many pages there are, because you want to know how long it's going to take you. The other thing I was thinking was, how long should I allow myself um, to read this book? You know, you don't want to forget the end, you don't want to forget, or you don't want to forget the beginning when you get to the end. Um, so I think a good time limit would be a week, which we all know is the same as seven days. So my goal was to read the book in seven days. So I was going to have to split up those 308 pages, these 308 pages here, over seven days. So the first thing that um, popped into my head was a division problem of 308 divided by 7. So I was thinking, um, what does that really mean when we divide something? So when we divide something, it's kind of like drawing seven pictures here, which these seven things would represent our seven days of the week, three, four, five, six, seven. And what we're dividing something, what we're doing is we're taking this number we're starting with, 308, and we're splitting it up a little bit into each of these seven days. So we're taking all of those pages and we're saying, we're going we're gonna to read a little bit each day. Um, another way to think of subtraction is to think of taking this 308 and subtracting 7 over and over and over until we get to zero. Um, just like addition is, or just like multiplication is repeated addition, division is kind of like repeated subtraction. How many times can we subtract seven um, to get to zero? That's our goal, to get to no pages left. Okay, so when we're dividing um, 308 by seven, um, the first thing I like to do is I like to take um, a close notice of my place value. So I put a little line here for the 100, a little line here for the 10, and a little line here for the 1s. Because a lot of times people get their place value mixed up when they're doing division problems because they're just throwing numbers everywhere up there. And it's a good idea to not do that. And one way to do that is by putting those little lines up there. Um, so one thing I like to think of first is let's look at our 100s place here. If we put any digit in the hundreds place, the smallest possible digit, that would be a 1, which would mean 100. If I read 100 pages for each of the 7 nights, that would be 700 pages. So I know um, right from the start, since we only have 308 pages, it's impossible for me to have any value in the um, hundreds place besides a 0. Now, you don't have to put a zero in the hundreds place if, if um, there's nothing there, but I like to put it there just because it holds that place and it makes me know that nothing else can go there. Um, the other shorthand way to look at it is to say, if we look at our three and our seven here, can we make a group of seven from three? And obviously, we can't do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move over to these two digits, the three and the zero, which is looks like a 30. But since this 3 is in the hundreds place, it's actually a 300. So one um, thing that's always good to do in a division problem is to kind of go to the side over here. And notice we're dividing by 7. It's always a good idea to write down your multiples of 7. So 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, and 56. And that's going to come in handy later. I recommend always doing that especially if you struggle a little bit with your multiplication tables. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to see how many groups of 7 here can fit inside 30. So what number on our left over here is closest to 30 without going over 30? And I think you guys can see that that is going to be 28, which is 7 times 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to put up in our answer a 4 
here in the tens place. Now remember when a four is in the tens place, that actually means a 40. So we know already that we're gonna have to read at least 40 pages per night. Um, what we can do now is we can multiply this four and seven and get our number 28 that we saw right there. And when we have this 28, it's actually not a 28 because up at the top, um, it was a four in the tens place, which is 40 and 40 times seven would be 280. So notice the two is in the hundreds place and the eight is in the tens place. So what we're actually doing is we're subtracting away 280 pages if we read 40 per night. Um, so 30 minus 28 though is going to give us two and we're gonna bring down this eight in the ones place. So if we read 40 pages per night, we would have 28 pages left over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those 28 pages and split them up over seven nights. Um, again, now we need to say how many groups of seven are in 28? And the same value as before, we're gonna see this number 28 over here to the side, which again was seven times one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna to go to the top, and we're gonna put a four in a one place. And if we read four more pages per night, that would be a total of 28 pages, which would leave us with nothing. So I answered my question, that if I read every night, I am going to have to read 44 pages each 